Hey guys, this is gonna be my Steve from Minecraft tutorial. I've learned a lot about Steve so far. In fact, I'll probably make a cool montage of some of the things I'll show you in this video. So yeah, Steve can do some pretty crazy things and we'll get to the advanced stuff but I'll just start off by telling you the basics about Steve. So obviously he can mine and he can craft but when you're mining you get gold on the 18th item, there it was there, and you get diamond on the 30th, there it was there. And as you may have noticed your wooden uh, shovel breaks on the 28th item. So yeah, if you're mining on these stages it's a bit different depending on the stages so there it goes, it broke on 28. 29, 30, there's the diamond again. But it is consistent, but it does slightly change depending on the stage. So I'll add a link in the description to some of the info on Steve's mining. When you craft, it's gonna use your best item. So you use the diamond there. And when you place blocks, it's gonna use your worst item. It's, see there, it's using the dirt blocks. All right, so the first move we're gonna look at is Steve's jab slash forward tilt. Steve is like Mega Man where your jab and forward tilt are the same. So I'm literally just holding down the A button right now and you can swing and you can see it actually combos there. So this move is really good at getting stage control. You can just carry your opponent off, smack them off there and you can even true combo it into a spike at higher percent. There we go. So the spike isn't the strongest but I am using the wooden pickaxe so if we get a stronger weapon. See there we go, Mario cannot make it back from there. Also at this percent you can do jab into forward smash and that is a true combo. Obviously it's gonna be stronger with the better materials but every time you do reset in training mode it gives you back the wooden sword. So I'll, I'll show you guys a lot of this stuff with the wooden weapons but just know when you get better weapons a lot of this stuff still works. It's just gonna be doing more damage. So he still works but it just sends him a lot further. His up air is when he uses his axe, and this move is really quick and really safe and also great for comboing. So you can do, do some juggles like that. And I'll get into the true combos later, but yeah, this move is very quick. Back air is gonna be your kill move. It's a bit slower as you can see, but it is really strong. In fact, if I get iron, it'll probably kill Mario around here. The diamond one is so strong, but see if your opponent is near the corner here, they explode. This move is really strong. On the other side, we have forward air, and this move is where he swings the pickaxe a lot faster. So it's not as strong, but it has a spiking hitbox, as you can see there. And now the spiking hitbox is like, see, it's a bit further. If you go right in, in them, it does not spike. But if you go back a bit, that is how you get the spike. So you want to hit them with the actual axe part of the pickaxe if you want to get the spike. And finally his last aerial down air. This move is very strong. You can jump off it so if you do down air jump you'll be able to get off it otherwise you'll just fall straight down to the ground. But this move is great at edge guarding. It's kind of like villagers bowling ball and it is so strong. Like look at that. You can use this down air similar to how Incineroar and King K. Rool use their down smash. So let's say your opponent tries to run along the ground and grab you, sorry, I've only got this one controller, or dash attack you. You can jump above it, and that will just get hit by the down air. So that's a really good option to kill opponents. And I've gone to Battlefield here because it's also good on the platform. Say your opponent's below you, they're trying to up air you. Just do that. Drop the anvil on their head, and it is going to work a treat. They're going to jump and up air straight onto your down air and you're just going to smack them. And as you saw before, it's a really strong option. The strange thing about Steve's aerials is that if you buffer them from a short hop, look at that. It's like if you immediately jump and do the back air, this is his back air, but obviously that's very different to this slow move. So if you do a rising move, it does this quick, weak attack. And same with this. And now this move is actually very fast, frame four. Say if your opponent hits your shield, you can hit them real quick with that forward air. And it combos into themselves at high percent. See, 53. It just combos into itself. And same with the back air. It even combos into itself at kill percent. So you can go like, get your opponent here. That is a true combo. And that is going to kill with the iron, the iron pickaxe. 
So this is a really good option, not only to just catch your opponent in neutral, like you can just really quickly, like you're running around, bam, bam, true combo, that'll kill. But out of shield, it's really good as well. So say Mario comes up behind me, he hits me with a dash attack, out of shield option, really good and really quick. Just quickly, Steve smash attacks, his up smash is really slow to um, do the entire move, but it's really quick to come out, frame eight. Super fast, which is good because you can do it out of shield. He also has his down smash with the lava bucket that covers both sides and sends it a really horizontal angle. So it's really good for killing off the side or even just getting your opponents off stage. And then finally, F smash, which is ridiculously strong if you get the diamond sword. I'm just going to show you right now. 100, this will easily kill from center stage versus Mario. Just get him here. Uncharged forward smash. So obviously with Steve, every time you get your opponent off stage, you are going to want to be mining. Because you are going to want these materials. They're so good. And a tip is that when you die... See, I've got my diamond. If I die... It goes back to the wooden moves. But you keep all your materials. You can see I still have my diamond down there. So if you're at like 100% and you mine a diamond, don't craft it. Save it to your next stock. You'll spawn in. When you're invincible, you can immediately go to the crafting table, get yourself a diamond. They can't stop you. You're invincible. So yeah, make sure you save your diamonds because they are really strong. In fact, this might kill Mario at 73, the back air thing. Oh, it definitely does. So yes, diamonds are crazy. All right, let's have a look at Steve's grabs. At very high percent, he has his up throw kill. Oh my God, it didn't even kill there. When you have rage, this would definitely kill though. But if you ever need it, there you go. You can kill with up throw, but obviously it takes a while. Other than that though, you probably won't be using up throw. You'll be using his other throws. Back throw, pretty unnecessary unless you just want to get your opponent off stage. Forward throw is great at sending your opponent off stage because look how low that angle is. And then Steve has his great edge guarding as well. See, that was all off that forward throw. And now finally, down throw. This is going to be your combo throw. You can do down throw dash tag. That's like the most basic thing you can do. So that's some guaranteed damage right there. You can do down throw forward air. And you can even do down throw into running forward tilt. See, that was true. And you can do that into more combos. And in fact, on Fox, this is really crazy. And probably on some other fast fallers as well. I'll just quickly show you now. So yeah, on fast fallers, this is really effective. Like, look at this on Fox. Look at the combo meter. This is all true. And then you can combo that F2 into down smash. And then the TNT blows up on fire. So that's good at edge guarding as well. But yeah, that is crazy on Fox. And then the down throw, there's something you can do specific on heavies as well. And then on heavies, you can do down throw into down tilt. And that only works on heavies, but that is a great true combo. Because then down tilt leads to some stuff like this. Crazy amount of damage. All true off a grab at 0%. So I imagine you guys want to learn some of the combos. So I'll show you now. Up tilt into up airs. See, that was true. And then what you can do is when you press jump up, if you hold B after you press up, you can make a block underneath you. So you probably need to practice doing this in the air. And then this is going to be how you get your combos going further. So jump, jump, up air, block. And then you can just like keep going up with them and you build underneath you as you attack them. So that is how you build up as you're comboing. Up air does not do as much damage as forward air, which is why I end the combo with forward air there. See, 6% for up air. 10% for forward air. All right, and now I'll try and show you. So this is kind of like the basic combo is like you do up airs, you build underneath you and then you knock them off stage. But the more complex thing that gets you a bit more damage is actually using up smash while you're comboing.
95%. Oh, I just, it was, just wasn't true at the end there, but it is true if you do it perfectly. Obviously, Steve just came out yesterday, but a 0 to 95% true combo, that is not too bad. You see, in that combo, I did the reverse up air there, and there's two reasons to do that. The first reason is that you can see his up air swings from the back. So, it is not going to be true always, especially if your opponent is DIing away and they're playing a smaller character to land the down tilt into up air, because they're going to go too far to the right. So if you do down tilt and reverse, the up air starts behind him, and so that is going to be like more true and hit more characters. The second reason is that if you build blocks here, compared to building blocks out here, these blocks, as you might have seen there, disappear far quicker. So especially if you're doing the up smash combo, you are not going to be able to do it out here because you're going to fall off your block way too quickly. So if you want more damage and more guaranteed follow-ups, you want to do the down throw into turnaround up air, and that's going to send them on stage because up air always sends them the way you're facing. See how he slowly moved towards the way I'm facing? But if you just want to send your opponent off stage, doing it straight like this is absolutely fine because then you can do something like this, get them off, and then smack them off the side there. And that would probably kill if you've got a diamond pickaxe. That forward air would just kill it off the side. Okay, so we'll get into some more combos later. But for now, let's look at the special. So if you do the t down B, it makes a TNT on the ground and creates a pressure point that if you step on, it'll blow it up. Or you can do it in the air and it doesn't create a pressure point. And it, what happens is it will just blow up. So once it starts flashing, after about five seconds, it will just blow up. You can also make a blow up sooner by using like fire like Ness's PK fire or Fox's up B will instantly explode it once it's in this ticking phase. Ready? Ticking, fire, bam. And this is a great ledge trapping tool because you can say set up like this so if your opponent regular gets up they're just gonna blow up. The TNT explosion goes through shield as well by the way. Not sure why it does but it does. So if you set up like this your opponent comes here he gets up he blows up and that's gonna kill them at high percent. You can cover roll like this if they roll, they're going to roll onto the the block there. Or you can just set up so you're all the way over here and you can just press it yourself whenever you like. If anything hits the pressure point, it'll blow up, by the way. So you can send a minecart. As soon as it hits it, it's going to blow it up. You can also air dodge off the TNT if you explode it. For example, you can do this. And I don't get hit at all. If you do down smash and you're holding shield to do the air dodge, you immediately like air dodge off and avoid the TNT. So this lets you activate it at any time, just like the pressure plate, but you don't get damaged at all. His other specials are the Nutri-B, which obviously does mining, crafting, and placing blocks. Side B is the minecart, and if you're riding in the minecart, it'll hit opponents like that, and you can even combo off it, you see there? And then if you get off it early, it's a command grab, but it will grab your opponent. And so there's a few tricks you can do with this. Obviously, I just showed there the side B. You can combo off it. With the grab, what you want to do, when they mash out, see, they have to jump out. So at high percent, if you land this side B, you want to swing your back here to try and get the kill when they pop out. Or at low percent, you can just combo off it as well. The CPU carol doesn't have the best mash, but yeah, you, you get what I mean. Once they pop out, you can follow up with an up air or a back air if they're at high percent. The side B is also great for recovering. I think you can even go under the entire stage. Yeah, look at that with the use of the side B. It's also great for recovering in this way as well. Say your opponent is at the ledge and you're coming back. You can just fly and smack them on your way onto stage. And then they might get scared and they want to shield it. So you do this. Look at that. That's crazy. And if it's a character that doesn't have a great recovery, they're just going to die from that, like Donkey Kong. Or if they're just not ready to mash out in time, that is going to kill them as well. So a great way, if your opponent is sitting here at the ledge, trying to stop you getting back, either use the cart and stay in it and smack them. Or use the cart to be a command grab that is just going to drop them off the stage. Just like that. And if you mess up and do it a little bit too high, it's still going to be a command grab anyway. 
and you're just going to be able to run on, get stage control, and then start comboing off your command grab. The side B also gives an extra jump, so you one, two, three. So it helps with recovering, or just in general as well, on stage, you can use an extra side B to stall out your opponents. The cart can also bounce off blocks, so bam, and then you can come back and go the other way. So that can be a good mix up to um, be a bit tricky with your opponents. You can also do a cool trick that's been called the Matrix where it's like you ride, put down a TNT, you ride in the cart and then you air dodge. See I'm actually not getting hit by the explosion. So this is like a crazy thing you can do at high percent to kill your opponents and not even damage yourself. You just go and then I air dodge it. Don't even get hit by it at all. It's also really good in neutral for like a dash back, like you avoid their attack and then you just come back in and you hit them with the cart. And then it combos for some reason. And to be even tricky with it, let's see if I can do this by holding two controllers. If they're trying to shield it, you can do the first hit of the side B, which is going to hit them if they're not shielding. And then if they are shielding, you can jump out and then the command grab is going to get them straight away. So yeah. So if you're doing the side B in neutral, you want to jump out as soon as it's about to hit them like this. Because then if it does hit them, you can combo off it like that. And then if they shield it, you're going to get them because it's a command grab and it's going to go through their shield. His up B is kind of weird. It's like Meta Knights from Brawl where you can just like go up and down and glide. But it doesn't have the best range in the world. And once you're stuck going up like this... You have no drift whatsoever. You're not going to be able to grab the ledge. So you got to be careful with this recovery. It is not the best, but it's pretty good. And then, of course, if you want to bring the crafting table towards you, if you're holding shield and press neutral B, it is going to bring the crafting table to you no matter where you are. And now this has some tricks that I don't think Sakurai intended. So usually when you drop shield, you have 11 frames of lag. See, that is me doing the F smash as soon as I can. In fact, let's do this in slow motion so you can see even better. This is me letting go of shield and immediately F smashing. See how there was that time there where I'm dropping my shield? I'll do it with jab. That is as quick as I can do it. But if you cancel your shield with the crafting table, see how much quicker that was? Because if you spawn the crafting table, it's only like two or three frames of lag. Maybe even one frame of lag. So you can act a lot quicker out of shield if you do the crafting table. So this is as quick as I can. And now this is as quick as I can with the crafting table. Way faster. So if your opponent does something really unsafe on your shield, but it's not enough where you could F smash it, say it's a bit too late, they can just get their shield out in time. If you do this trick, you're going to be able to punish people out of shield way quicker. And this is great because you can do the jab quicker out of shield. So, where maybe usually you weren't able to um, act out of shield quick enough to hit them with that. So yeah, the easy thing out of shield is, that, as I was saying before, the quick back air or the quick forward air out of shield. But, even better, the quick jabs or the quick F smash or the quick up smash out of shield if you use this crafting crafting table. Uh, I'm going to call it a glitch, honestly, because I don't think this is how you're supposed to be able to use it. But there you go. The crafting table also has some other properties that I once again don't think are, are intended. And I think these ones might be patched out. I don't know if this one is going to be patched out, but I think this might be patched out here. As you can see, we've got Squirtle. And he actually gets stopped by the crafting table. And then this is the same with like Charizard. He's our Flare Blitz. It gets stopped by the crafting table. And a few other moves get stopped by the crafting table. Like Min Min's F Smash, it just stops here. It stops at the crafting table. So you can use that to your advantage. And maybe, who knows, maybe they won't patch it out and you can keep using this to your advantage. All right, now let's look at some ledge trapping. What I've figured out is really good is if you place a block right here, when your opponent gets up, let's say, let's go a bit higher percent. And so you just put this block right here. If you get a grab, look at that, it stage spikes them. So putting a block right there is really good because if they do a regular get up, 
you can throw them straight into this and it's going to send them flying down to the blast zone. And this can also be done the other way around. Let's say you're getting off the ledge, place a block there, grab, back throw, bam. Crazy. So placing a block right here is great for spiking your opponents. And then if you combine this with the TNT as well, it's like a whole thing. Look, place TNT there, block, block. How are they going to get off the ledge? They have to roll and then you grab them and then you do that to them. It's crazy. For edge guarding, how it works is it uses your worst resources and that is usually going to be dirt. Characters can go through the dirt with their attacks. If their up has a hitbox, it's going to go straight through and bust through to the dirt. I'll see if I can show it with Squirtle here. Let's just get his percent up a bit. And his up B, since it does have a hitbox, it should go straight through the dirt. See how it went through the dirt and he went to the ledge? Wow, I'm, I'm surprised I got that on my first go. But if you use the wooden and like iron and cobblestone blocks, it stops recoveries more than the dirt. So the strat might be to just kind of waste your dirt in neutral. So when you do get your opponent off stage, you can block it with the wood. See how that stopped it more than the dirt? And then the iron block would stop it even more than that. So yeah, that might be a strat. Use your dirt blocks so you can have better edge guarding with like the wooden blocks and the iron blocks. However, the dirt blocks are really good versus teleport recoveries because teleports actually can't go through. Actually, I'll just demonstrate it like this. Go to control. See, you can't actually teleport through so if you place a block right here, they actually can't get through it. So the teleport recoveries, the dirt blocks are really good. So it's kind of going to be matchup dependent. And then finally as well, if you're standing on a block, it disappears quicker than when it's like this, see? And you can use this to cancel your moves. So usually down to... Pretty laggy. See, I couldn't follow up with the side B at all there. But if you do the dirt block... You can cancel your move, and then you can hit them straight away. And this, see, it was good there on stage, but it's even better for edge guarding. Now, this might work, not work on Palu, because it's just going to teleport. So you can do this technique off stage. See, I'll place a block, down tilt, and then side B. See, it cancels my down tilt, so I can hit the side B. C crazy edge guard. So the edge guarding is going to change a lot, depending on what character you're versing. And of course, you could also let trap by just going down there and doing a smash attack like that. But the reason the down tilt is good because it lingers. See how it lingers like that? So you've got more of a chance to catch your opponent as they're jumping back towards the stage. All right, so second last thing, let's go over the combos that Steve has. So yeah, at low percent, the simple one with just up tilt block and get your opponent off stage. Down tilt is great at low percent because you can also see, get the up tilt there off the down tilt or even the reverse up air as well. And so the down tilt is great in neutral, because if they run forward, they're just going to run straight into this fire. You can also just follow up off the down tilt at mid percent. If I can get it here. Ah, oh, see that wasn't true, but it can be true. Yep, there you go. But not too much, so it's definitely better at low percent. The higher up percent you go, the worse it gets, because at high percent you're not going to get anything off it in neutral. But, as an edge guarding tool, it is great. You can just stand on stage chuck off the down tilt and then they just die so yeah down tilt it's usefulness as a combo tool and in neutral goes down the higher percent but then it gets better at edge guarding with the car you can do a double hit combo into a spike and then you can follow up with the down down air there go into the edge guard so you can follow up off the cart jabs can easily lead into forward air in fact at low percent you can even combo down tilt into down tilt to get more damage before you start off your combo Another combo you can also do is either jab into strong forward air spike or the, the weak forward air into the forward air spike. And then that spiking forward air actually can combo into another rising forward air and start all over again. See, look. See, there we go. And that would kill if it had the iron pickaxe as well. The combo still works with iron, I'll show you. It's just going to be a slightly different percent. See, there we go, it still comboed into that second hit and then it would combo into another hit. And the forward air spike actually allows you to do a lot of follow-ups. You can even just land like a down smash. 
off stage. See, the forward air has heaps and heaps of hits done. In fact, you could probably do it into a uh, up two as well. Yeah, and you can go up two and then combo them off the side like that. Just like how we comboed off the down two into the reverse up airs. Obviously, down throw into down two does not work on these characters like Ike. Okay, maybe it does, but on the <laughs> before the characters that it doesn't work on that aren't heavy, that is when you want to do the down throw into run forward reverse up air. Just like that, if you want to do the big big damage combos, or you can keep it simple, down throw dash attack, down throw jab jab. He also just simply has up tilt into up smash, which is part of that combo combo on the platform. But if you're on the ground, land an up tilt, you can combo that into up smash. It never combos when it kills, I'm pretty sure. Maybe on some light characters like Pichu, it'll kill them off the top. But see, it's just not killing yet. 103. Okay, there we go. But yeah, it usually doesn't kill. But if you get really specific percents, you can get up tilt, up smash to land the kill. You can also do up to into back air. You can see that's a true combo that you can get for the kill, which works really well when you have the good weapons like diamond. I'll get a diamond now to show you. If you land an up to even at, let's say nine, will it kill at 90? 80? Let's try 80. Let's see if this kills. So you just be running around, you land an up to into back air. Wow, that does kill. And you do the sliding turn around up to where you hold one way and then hold the other way on the analog stick and then flick up. And that, because the up to is like the up air. It hits from the other side first. So yeah, you can be running around. Does it kill at 80? Let's get Ike to the ledge here. Running around, hit an up tilt. Oh my god, that is crazy. Up to back air, true combo to get the kill at 80% on even Ike. All right, I think I covered most of the combos there, so let's just go into the final thing, and that is going to be this up B tech. You can see there our ledge cancelled it. So usually if you do up B on the ground, you fly straight up, but if you jump a little bit before you do the up B, you can do this thing where you go along the ground, and it allows you to ledge cancel as you can see there and it also allows you to ledge trump if you space it a bit further back like here see there we go ledge trump straight away so this could be an interesting mix-up where if they're about to grab the ledge you can go grab the ledge trump and then knock them off stage so they have to recover or you can you can do it a bit further back so you get the cancel and then if they think you're coming in for the ledge trump you can like read um like cancel come back here and then read the roll with an up smash or something. So yeah, that could be an interesting mix up. And the up B as well, if you do it like this, actually combos like into up smash, which is crazy. Or at a bit lower percent, you could also do like up B into up tilt. See, true combo and then get combo started like that. And it's also a good way to get out of the combo, especially if you don't have the minecart, because the minecart's definitely the best. But if you don't want to use your resources or you don't have any iron, fly out the corner just like that. Anyway, I hope you guys at least learned something new. It's literally still uh, like just hit around 24 hours since Steve has come out. So obviously more is gonna get discovered, but I thought I would start you guys all off on the right foot with some of these crazy things people have already discovered about Steve. If you could please leave a like if you learned anything new, it helps me out a lot. And also subscribe because I'm so close to 100k. Thank you guys so much.